In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Intermediate Value Theorem. We're going to talk a little bit about the theorem and then work out a problem where we verify that the theorem holds and then we actually find the, the value of C that's guaranteed by the theorem. All right, so the Intermediate Value Theorem states that if a function is continuous on the closed interval from, interval from A to B and K is any number in between F of A and F of B, then there is at least one number C in that closed interval from A to B such that F of C equals K. All right, now <clears throat> a special note here. This intermediate value theorem tells you that at least one C exists. There could be more than one C, but there's at least one that does exist, but it does not provide you with a method for finding C. So you've got to um, come up with your own approach on how you're going to go about finding that value. All right, now I do want to just kind of take a look at a graphical representation of this theorem. All right, so let's do graphical representation here. So that we can picture what's going on and so then maybe you'll understand why you're you've got at least one value C in that interval from A to B. All right, so let's draw us a little graph here. All right, let's suppose we're on the closed interval from A to B. So I'm going to give myself a closed interval from A to B here. All right, and then um, I've got an F of A and an F of B. So I don't know, let's say right up here. That's going to be my F of A value because I'm not drawing my function just quite yet. And then let's suppose my F of B value would be right about there. Okay, now it says there's at least one value, C, all right, so one value down here on my x interval, all right, in between A and B, such that F of C would equal K, all right, so let's say my K has to be in between then my F of A and F of B, so I'm going to draw me a little line there. All right, now this function, all right, now if it's a real simple function, could just go straight down through both those two points and it's going to cross it at only one spot. All right, because it's the only way I'm going to get from f of a to f of b is I'm going to have to cross that k if k is in between those two values. All right, so that's where it's at least one value. But if this function maybe had lots of curves and hills and valleys in it, it may cross more than one time. So let's draw one that's a little more creative. All right, maybe that's my f of x function, okay? So the points that we're looking at, in this case, the way I've drawn this function, right there would be one c value at which f of c equals k. Here would be a second c value that f of c equals k. And then here would be a third one. So the theorem guarantees at least one, but there could be more than one. Okay, so for a nice little, you know, graphical representation of what this theorem is talking about. All right, now let's take a look at an example. Okay, let's say that our directions tell us to verify that the intermediate value theorem applies and then find the value of C guaranteed by the theorem. Okay, they're going to give us a function, they're going to give us a closed interval, and then they're going to give us that, that k value. f of c has to equal negative 4. All right, now the first part you need to do is says verify that the intermediate value theorem applies. Okay, so I'm going to do my verify part first. Okay, well, first of all, the theorem said that f of x had to be continuous, all right, on that closed interval. So you're going to take a look at this function. It's a polynomial curve. As you should remember, all polynomial curves are smooth and continuous, all right, and definitely smooth and continuous on that interval. So I have checked that part, so I need to write that down. f of x is continuous on that closed interval from 0 to 2. All right, and then I need to check my f of a and f of k values, or f of um, a and f of b, assuming that my interval is from a to b, all right, so that I can determine whether or not this k value falls in between them. So I'm going to check f of 0. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of arithmetic, arithmetic here, plug it in, 0 squared, plus 5 times 0 minus 10. That's going to give me a negative 10 for that. Now let's plug in our b, f of 
2. So I'm going to go 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 10. That's going to be 4 plus 10 minus 10, so that's going to give me a value of 4. All right, now my k value is negative 4. Negative 4 falls in between those two values, f of a and f of b. Okay, so I'm good. All right, so now I can draw a conclusion. Therefore, since f of x is continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 2 and negative 10 is less than my k value, which is less than f of b, then the intermediate value theorem applies. All right, I've went through the theorem, all the pieces and parts of it, and I've verified that it really does. Okay, if you were to do this, and this function was not continuous on that interval, then the intermediate value theorem would not apply. If you plugged in your f of a and f of b, and your k value did not fall in between there, then the intermediate value theorem would not apply. Okay, in this scenario it does. Okay, so then it says find the value of c guaranteed by the theorem. So now we're going to find c. All right, so um, probably the easiest way to do this is my function has to be equal to this negative 4 in order to find it because I'm, I'm going to plug in f of c and I'm going to get out 4. So I'm going to start by taking that function, x squared plus 5x minus 10, and I'm going to set it equal to my k value. All right, so the easiest way to do this is probably move everything to the left and hopefully it will factor. So then I'm going to have an x squared plus a 5x. If I add 4 to both sides, I'll get a minus 6. All right, now I'm going to set this up. It is a nice little trinomial, and it looks like a 6 and a 1 is going to work on this, so I'm going to try to factor it. So I'll have an x here and an x here, um, and I need a 6 and a 1. And to get a positive 5, it's going to have to be a plus 6 there and a minus 1 there. All right, now from here I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero. So from this I get x equals a negative six, and from this one I get an x equals one. All right, now these are possible values for c, all right, that are going to work. Now, granted, when I've just solved this, both of them do work. f of negative six does equal negative four. f of one does equal negative four. The part that I have to consider or remember or think about is I'm only working on the interval from 0 to 2. x equals negative 6 does not fall on that interval, so um, while it does make this true, it's not in my interval, so I don't need to worry about this value. All right, so I'm going to say not in interval, which means then that I only have one value of c that is guaranteed by this intermediate value theorem on this closed interval from 0 to, zero to 2. All right, so let's try to write some concluding sentence here. Let's say, therefore, um, since x equals 1 is in that closed interval from 0 to 2, and f of 1 equals negative 4, then c equals 1, which is guaranteed by the theorem. So my value for c guaranteed by the theorem then is going to be 1. All right, so it's definitely in the interval, and f of 1 equals negative 4, so then we've got a c. All right, so um, just a little short discussion about the intermediate value theorem, a graphical representation of it, and then one example of how you can apply that to a problem and use it. Definitely thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.